control. Control. So amazing to see what God is doing in Paul's life. I'm seeing letter K spinning in the heavens. And I'm seeing a door opening for you. In the video you can see I'm like pale face because I wasn't expecting it. It's like in the realms of the spirit I'm in Portland. I'm in a place called That's where Portland. I live, that's where I live. Portland. Prophesy. I am already in your house. Generational blessing coming to your I house. I receive, I receive. I'm taken here in my spiritual chariot. I came out, I saw myself crossing the bridge. I began to move all the way, going all the way straight. There is this river on my right. It's written something like Columbia, Columbia River. There is a place on my left. I'm seeing something salmon, white salmon. I am at a conventional center. After Glenston, I stood at your house. I began to see letter E, letter L, letter I, letter J, letter A, letter Elijah, H. Elijah, that's my dad. That's your father. In the realms of the spirit, I saw a picture for him. I'm seeing this Elijah. I'm seeing glasses. I'm seeing beard, beard, That's beard. That's my dad, yeah, beard. He started saying Elijah, and I was like, oh, okay. And then Vitali, which is my uncle. blessing of the Lord is upon you the anointing of Jehovah God is upon you and the Lord says no weapon form that against thee shall prosper my blessing is upon you my anointing is upon you and my grace will never depart from your house says the spirit of the living God there's something about construction that God is going to release over your life and there's a special door is opening for you the Lord says it is through investment that I will increase your substance I see you investing, I see you spinning numbers, I see things happening. The Lord says, my blessing is upon you, and because of your prayers, I will use you to intercede for many. I will use you to be a blessing to many. Prepare yourselves in prayer and in fasting, I'm opening a door for you, says the Spirit of the Lord. So now that you've heard that word of the Lord, what can you say now about your situation? Thank you, Jesus. I see you here. ProfitPassion.com Visit our website today. Partner with us. Visit our website and partner with the Prophet today. Matthew 7 verse 7, Ask, and it shall be given you, seek, and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. The Bible says when you pray, you ask, A-S-K, you ask, and God gives it unto you. But it's hidden, so you have to move and begin to seek. You find it, but it's locked, so you have to knock. When you knock someone that is already inside the door, who open for you to get in. Matthew 7 verse 7, Ask, and it shall be given you, seek, and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. The Bible says when you pray, you ask, A-S-K, you ask, and God gives it unto you. But it's hidden, so you have to move and begin to seek. You find it, but it's locked, so you have to knock. When you knock someone that is already inside the door, who open for you to get in. KTV today. Shocking prophecy.
fatal accident cancelled. Shocking prophecy by Prophet Passion Java. Genealogy last level of prophecy. Stay tuned for more viewing. God bless everybody watching me. This is the Gaffer. The prophet Passion Java, the most trusted name in the prophetic excited to sit here today and bring you into another revolutionary experience in the holy ghost and today we are and we, we we're not going to be touching much of uh who is in heaven and what what is in heaven and how what is the foundation of heaven like we, we we're not going to be talking much of the spirituality but we're going to talk about the spirituality in our real life and we're going to be looking into deep stuff and we're gonna be talking of what do you know we about to talk about but but but, but we're gonna try to be honest with each other and we're gonna be trying to open each other's eyes because I've had a lot of people giving me questions on a one-on-one -on -one session when they raised up one-on-one -on -one and they call me prophet my husband like me to be like this my, my my wife wants things like this but in my church we are told this what what do you say I I did um a video called why did i get married the uncensored one which is private and then the uh the censored one which is public and a, a lot of people have been writing us and emailing us and today i said let me sit down here live and and address issues like oreo sex and uh homosexuality and gays and lesbians and you know that that that, that, that sex that is into uh higher levels or uh, in the deeper levels and you you know i'm talking about uh, and and um I, I have a big testimony right now as i come to this uh, uh i have a i have a big testimony i want somebody to 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 hear before we we, we get into this subject and uh let this testimony be also an encouragement and also a promise to you that if god can do it for my son he can do it for you too if god can do it for others he surely can do it for you too so i'm gonna call my son all the way in the uk and uh hello son i'm gonna put you on loud so you can share your testimony I'm, I'm gonna make him share the testimony which he had uh, this year after years and years of believing God for a green card in their house and they rested for one-on-one -on -one in there uh, I spoke and prophesied to them of course I gave them prophetic instructions and they followed the prophetic instructions and God did it for him uh, Mr. Shfamba what's your testimony today? Uh oh So he's going to. All right, you free? Sorry, cut off. Thank you, Papa. Bless you. Uh, you're free to share your testimony. Yes. Um, we we have been struggling to get papers. It was mainly for my wife and and, and daughter. Uh -huh. uh, she's been applying since uh, 2014 and all the applications were being rejected mm. so in uh 2000 and december 2017 we had a one-to-one -one with you papa uh -huh. and you prophesied and you said it, it was it, it is well it was going to happen in the in, the, in 20, 2018. Uh -huh. you then you then came to uk uh and prophesied again um at the conference and you said um the papers will come out in october mm. and you had in originally you said it would be october 2019 mm. um and 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 i said make it this year papa mm. and, and you prophecy, said okay pro prophecy said it's 2019 in october your papers are coming 
October 2019, your papers are coming. And I said, you said make it sooner, Papa. Make it sooner. Uh huh. And you say, and and you said, okay. Everyone who has issues with papers, they will be they will be resolved. Mm. So we've been. Um, uh, and I told you to show a seed God. about it, right? Uh, yes, we had, we, we had um, given a seed that the seed was um, it was 2018. 2018. Then what happened? Yes. So th this was this was originally when we had a one to one. Uh, you told us to to give a seed of 2018. Uh huh. And then 2018 came. You came to the UK in May. Mm -hmm. uh may this year and then in october you prophesied that in october it will it will come out mm. um 2019 then 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 when we said um uh make it sooner mm -hmm. then you said okay it will happen and everyone else who's got an issue with a green card issue um it will happen and um it then so happened that the beginning of November this year, mm. the papers just came, which means they were processed in October, Kado and they just came Kabra, the, the first week of uh, of November. No, ex the exact date was the fifth of November. That's when we received it. So right now, the prophecy is fulfilled. Everything is done. Everything is done. The prophecy is fulfilled. My wife wa hadn't worked for more than two years. Now she's working. She's just started working. Ah, brava, uh, and even um, my passport, they were holding my passport because of the application, because I was assisting with the applications. And now I'm able to travel. So glory be to God. May the Lord bless you and continue to do big things for you. I pray Amen. for extra fat blessings to rest upon you and your house. I call you to testify so that somebody watching here can be encouraged and they can know their papers are on the way, their fulfillment of their prophecies are on the way, and once a prophet declares a thing from the Lord, it will surely come to pass. Amen. Bless you, son. Thank you, brother. Thank all right. you, This is a major testimony all the way from UK. And after all that was said, God had to come down and release forth their papers. And I believe there is somebody watching me right now. You have been believing God for papers. You have been believing God for a turnaround. I'm going to pray for you right now. And I believe something great is going to happen. I believe there is a strong anointing that's going to take place. And, and you are going to see a major turnaround. A major turnaround taking place in all sectors of your life. I want you, if you are watching me live right now, or you'll be watching a rebroadcast, I want you, if you can, to go on prophetpassion.com and find your own offering and sow your, sow your, your, your own seed and believe God for a turnaround. As I stretch my hand right now to pray, uh, I want to pray and release that blessing, those papers to somebody as we are getting into our topic, the topic of the day, which I believe is a life-changing topic. Father, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, to everybody who is hearing me right now, let there be breakthroughs before end of this year. I, I declare and I prophesy, if you are believing God for a green card, it is coming out. If you are believing God for a marriage breakthrough, it is taking place. Whatever connection you are believing God for, I prophesy financial breakthrough, mortgages. I pray in the name of Jesus, death cancellation. I pray somebody is watching me, believing God for a freedom being delivered from any bondage you don't sleep at night you're having nightmares spiritual husbands whatever it is i pray for you today in the mighty name of jesus christ you are coming out in jesus name as we play this song I want everybody to go and uh give your offering of the day on prophetpassion.com and we are going to start today's topic is going to be super spot or speedy speedy red. again this is the gaffer God bless you as you give. Feeling I am swept up in this lost. 
that lonely place But then you surround me With your heavenly embrace You open up the heavens And I can fully see All the angels come down And you stand by me You wrap your arms around me And wipe my tears away Make my broken heart whole And the angels say Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord again. This is the Gaffer Prophet Passion Java, the most trusted name in the prophetic. Excited to sit here and bring you into this revelatory experience. Uh, we have a, an, an interesting topic today because we are dealing with uh, a, 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 a lot of things here. We're going to be talking about what's your, uh, what's your mindset, what's your idea, what's your perception when it comes to gay, when it comes to Lisbon, uh, transgenders. Do all these people go to heaven is the question. Do all these people go to heaven? Is oral sex a sin, right? Is using a condom a sin in your marriage? Not outside of marriage, in your marriage, right? Will you go to heaven if you are practicing such? So if you have any other things that you want to question if uh, that goes together with all this, you can type your question on Facebook or on, Paris, or on uh, Periscope and... Um, I don't know exactly where you're watching me from, even if you're on YouTube. I, I want you to know that today there are many answers that we're going to be touching and many blessings that are going to take place and, and you're going to see uh, the, the, the greatness of God in this place. And um, uh, I'm going to call different men of God and they're going to put on their, their perceptions towards this and what they think about it. And it's going to help a lot of people because many people are 
are caged and some people are bound by other people's perceptions not the truth of the gospel so we're going to get into the word of god and we're going to get into explanations from different men of god and each and every man of god is going to say his mind and i'm going to start from one to another to another to another and surprisingly i'm going to call some great men of god here and they are also going to bring forth their revelation on what we are talking about and if you're watching me and you have also your perception i want you to write what do you think about it what do you say about it and um uh the first one here i have prophet gary king and uh prophet gary king how are you doing hello papa how are you papa is always doing good but we are talking about the flesh today what pleases the flesh you know that last hour of the flesh especially when you go on bed with your wife and uh you are enjoying and all those things and what do you think about the topic we are talking about mainly what what is your perception on gay people i am a gay but i have jesus in my heart i am a lesbian but i have received jesus i love my partner we are already married can we divorce uh, can I live without my partner because I only have been uh, I only feel for women when I'm a woman I only feel for men when I'm a man what's your perception son thank you Papa for this opportunity uh -huh. and for creating a platform to discuss things that we don't hear in church every day yeah but they are happening everywhere yeah mm -hmm. the topic is what pap <laughs> extra super uh, this one is chili is uh -huh. extra extra this one is Spicy extra from extra india so what's your what your, what's your <laughs> thought uh this one on gays papa my question the first question is maybe on the on this on your question is where did the gays come from where do they come from? Where do they originate from? <laughs> that will help us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That that's a good question. We 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 are tracking now, and the Bible speaks from the book of Genesis. Adam is 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 not with Steve, but Adam is with Eve, and yeah. he gives birth to two boys. I don't know why God is is making him to give birth to boys only why when we oh supposed God. to have a boy and a girl a boy and a girl but it's only <laughs> boys which is also controversial why are they boy and a boy and 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 we go forth like that but if we go yeah. down we are going to get to genesis chapter number six and genesis yes, six God. speaks of angels that came and they looked at the women and they had sex mm. with them and kids were born and yes, God imagination grew evil to an extent that god said let me destroy everybody but we also move backwards where we see uh later on when we move we are going to see uh around genesis later on in the sodom and gomorrah that's when uh gayism and lisbon began to move in higher levels until when the angels went to heaven and said god this is happening on earth god says nah I need to go down myself and sit for myself and he walked himself for and past abraham's house and went there and saw what was happening and says because of this i'm going to destroy the whole world and uh it's going to destroy all of sodom and gomorrah and lord says uh abraham says lot is in there oh god god and god says okay i'll save lot i'm sending two angels and when those angels were seen and uh, man says mm, these guys look fine let us go and hit this man and when they were coming after the man the angels brought them with blindness that's when we really talk about gayism in the bible mm. so your question is being answered it's deriving from yes so, and Gomorrah. So, yes so when you when we look at their origin baba they originated to a pla from a place where god actually destroyed and another thing that is very very important when god created adam he says let them be fruitful and in john in john he says that uh, uh uh god delights in fruitfulness uh I, i'm failing to to quote the script as it is god wants people to be fruitful that's what god wants so when there is fruitlessness god is not happy because a man and a man cannot produce fruit a woman and a woman cannot produce fruit which is actually opposite to what god wants so it becomes a dry seed that cannot produce anything now somebody was talking in an interview 
and somebody was saying this is what I think people should talk about when they talk about gays there's someone who is a gay because of pleasure and lust and there's someone who is gay because he is born feeling for the same sex so if you are born a man and you are feeling for another man can we say it's a demon can we say it's a spirit because it's 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 like a man who is born a child that is born with both sex uh, parts on his body he's a boy he's a girl and they remove one but what they remove is what he feels for <laughs> and then he receive Jesus and he still keep feeling okay. because feelings they don't go is he going to yeah. heaven for feeling that and satisfying his feelings for that what's what, what, what's your perception on that okay what takes people to heaven is jesus in their heart but now paul says my little children i, I preach unto you until christ be formed in you mm. so the, the 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 life of christ is to dominate in an individual so i'm gonna paul add my other son so we can have different perception yes, and be our people and I, I keep checking on facebook and periscope to see if there are other questions and what people are also saying so let's keep going bishop sanders you are with prophet king on this live broadcast right now yes papa glory all right prophet king keep going so papa may i think that uh once someone receives jesus the life of Jesus is supposed to dominate in that person and the life of Jesus is supposed to bring them back to the original plan of God which was for well, what I said fruitfulness so so if you are not in the original to... plan of God but you have received Jesus in your heart will you go to heaven if you are not you have received Jesus but you are still having the same feelings and you are just committing the act and jesus comes during the act are you going to heaven or are you going to hell mm. <laughs> bishop sanders, uh, bishop prophet, sanders. What, what are your thoughts bishop sanders <laughs> <laughs> oh wow you want my two cents on this uh the person has received jesus christ as the lord and savior but they are still dealing with an issue yes then jesus and, comes and, are they going to heaven um i would say well, num well number one because we got to look at it from an orthodox and an or unorthodox view uh my first answer would be that, that that god is judge his decision is is final on whether that person uh will enter um into eternal bliss or whether he would uh enter into eternal damnation uh, also, uh, and, and I know you can go deeper on this, Papa, but we have to uh, we have to look into origins uh, as well, because uh, the Bible tells us that some have been predestinated. All have been predestinated uh, from the beginning uh, from the beginning of time. That 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 God has already predestinated, and there are some that have been predestinated for eternal damnation. And some have uh, been predestinated to be with God. So we have to uh, put that into the picture as well, if that makes any sense. Uh, some, some people belong to God. Uh, others belong uh, to the devil. And uh, we, we definitely have so to pay close attention. You are saying that. some people are already of the devil and some people are already of Jesus, regardless to what both of us are going to do. Uh, yes, Papa. I know that sounds crazy, but but definitely that's what I'm saying. So when the Bible says you have been predestined, you are saying it cannot be changed. What is written in the book of life is in the book of life. Yes. Hmm. That's interesting. And, and, All right. Yeah, now, if we go to the book of Romans, chapter number, chapter number seven, it talks about the struggle in the flesh. And Paul, being the greatest of the apostles, says, when it comes to sin, I'm the less among the apostles because I'm the greatest sinner. I will to do what is good, but I find myself doing what is bad. In conclusion now, around verse 36, he says, uh, With my spirit I shall save the Lord, 
but with my flesh I shall save the law of sin. Mm -hmm. Because he could not be delivered from lying, from stealing, from maybe sleeping around, maybe lusting, maybe masturbation. I don't know what he was struggling with. But that mm. was his conclusion. What do you both say about that? Wow. Can we say, uh, can we say sin is only big if you are gay? Or sin is big when you are Lisbon. Sin is big when it comes to oral sex or I don't know whatever view you have. But at the same time, if you just lie or if you don't pay your tithe or if you don't do this, then you're going to heaven. But if this sins, you will not go to heaven. Um, I'll let Prophet I'll let Prophet Jerry King go first. <laughs> <laughs> Prophet King. Uh, this uh, this one is dangerous, but but this one yeah. my own perception my, my my own perception is uh it is just the spirit of perversion uh -huh. opposite what God originally opposite what God originally uh, set forth. So if you are not working with God, you are definitely working with the devil. If you are not flowing with God, you are definitely flowing with the devil. That's what I'll say. So can you walk right. with God while you are doing things of the devil? Yeah, because the Bible says walk, walk with the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So there are some desires that are there that are ungodly. But now the fact that you have received Jesus, you see, once you have received Jesus, a new life is supposed to start operating within you. And God will give you time to, 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 to sort yourself out. But if you fail to sort yourself, because look at God's harsh judgment when it came to Sodom and Gomorrah, his harsh judgment. We, we, we never found God destroying somewhere with fire before. And it was the first time God is, is responding harshly. So let me take you backwards. Let me take you backwards because you both are dealing with the Old Testament and you are you, you, you keep <laughs> sitting in the Old Testament. So let us go because the New Testament now brings a demarcation between the gospel of works and the gospel mm. of grace. I'm going to heaven because my works are perfect before God and, and I'm going to heaven because Jesus died for my sins. I have grace, right? Now, the right. thief on the cross, did he get any chance to recover from his lifestyle? Or because he believed in Jesus, he was told, I'm going with you. It's a question. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, Papa. Uh, he did not get Re baptized or anything. Re Revelations, Revelations says, whoever shall not be found in the book of life shall be thrown into the lake of fire so the qualification for heaven is to find your name written in the book what puts it you what, what puts word. you in the book of life what puts you in the book of life is the name of jesus in your in your is having jesus in your heart so the question is i well, still the feel tricky, for men the tricky and i have a man next to me on bed when i go back home i just received jesus I get home when I am having my partner that married me two years ago before I met Jesus in bed and Jesus comes, am I going to heaven? And Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Christianity is not a lifestyle. Christianity is a life. But when your lifestyle, when you receive Jesus, you receive I'm gonna come back to my same point, Papa. When you receive Jesus, ah. you receive the life of Jesus, uh -huh. and the life of Jesus is supposed to produce the lifestyle of Jesus. But now, son, so the you lifestyle you are talking about, lifestyle is in the flesh, but the <laughs> life of Jesus is in my spirit. For example, I can be sexually addicted. Ah. That means I'm sick in my soul. I don't need pills because pills, they can only heal my body. But if I'm sexually addicted, I'm sick in my mind. My spirit is not sick. My flesh is not sick, but my soul, my mind is sick. I can't sleep. I'm thinking of having sex. I'm thinking of it. Even if a woman comes and gives me sex, I want another one and another one. I'm sick in the mind, right? So 
Mm -hmm. there, there is a demarcation between life of the spirit in my spirit and the life of the soul in my soul and the life of the flesh in my flesh. If I lie, who is lying? Is my spirit lying? No, it's the soul, Papa. If I speak in tongues, is my soul speaking in tongues? No, it's the spirit. So the question is, if I am born again in my spirit and I have Jesus in my spirit, and put a tattoo in my body. Will I go to heaven? The spirit. Or you want to think about it and I call another people. And then I'll call you back later. Okay, Papa. Alright, I'll call you both soon. It's just hot like, like, like spicy from India. But I know we're going to get to the bottom of what we're talking about today. And I know there's going to be some answers and many people are going to be blessed. And there shall be a major turnaround that's going to take place. To This is the, 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 the Reverend Odin James. He's going to bring forth his perception on what we are talking about. It's hot. But I know somebody's coming out with a word that can go and change hey, other lives. The Reverend, this is the gaffer. I'm so excited to have you on the live right now. I'm live and I just put you on loudspeaker. You're live. How you doing? This is Pastor O'Dane, C.W. James. God bless Everybody you. Everybody is, is excited to have you. I have a topic here, hot like uh, Indian spicy. The question I have for you, uh, Reverend, is is using a condom a sin is using a condom a sin when you are married and you don't want kids to come year after year year after year and you use a condom the bible is being claimed by many people in the old testament that ah a man spewed some seeds in the ground so therefore he committed sin so it's not okay and on that topic we are also going to be dealing with is eating each other as husband and wife as <laughs> seed <laughs> and going to the other areas that are not automatically obvious as sin what's your take on oreo sex and using a condom well we'll start with the condom first um first of all we we have to be very careful not to not to westernize eastern scripture uh scripture was not written with a western context there, there was no such thing as a condom in the oh, bible it, uh, this is you're saying in the scriptures condom was not yet invented it was not there All it right. was so not what, there what we, so we cannot have a scripture that talks of a condom right what we have to do is 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 use the principles that the bible teaches All right. as a blueprint on how to navigate our modern day world and so uh as you look at that uh uh the only instance that we really have of contraception that so instead of using the word uh condom we should use the word contraception which is a a prevention of pregnancy uh -huh. the only the, the only the only time we see that was with Ur and onan um um when when uh onan is supposed to raise uh, it, it's it's the it's called the the, the lever leveret marriage Mm -hmm. um, when your brother dies, you're supposed to take your brother's wife, raise up children um, in your brother's name that would be able to, to claim the inheritance. Mm -hmm. And what Onan did is is pull out uh, during sexual intercourse so that he wouldn't get um, um, uh, his brother's wife pregnant so that he could keep the inheritance for himself. Mm. So, so God kills him not because of the pulling out. There's a lot of people that wrongly... Uh, uh, a hermeneutic have wrong hermeneutics in that scripture saying that God killed him because he pulled out. No, God killed him because he was trying to get the pleasure without the responsibility. Mm. Uh, he was he was trying to to enjoy her physically, sexually, without doing what he was supposed to do, which was raise children in his brother's name. So the, the sin there was disobedience against the leveret marriage law that was in the Old Testament. Um, so, so it's pulling out. The pulling out was not was not intrinsically the reason. It was the motive behind it. Thus, once we once we once we take care of that from that perspective, then you see that uh, contraception overall, um, God has never uh, 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 really spoken against contraception. He has spoken about the blessing of children 
and blessed is the man that have, have his quiver full of them uh, but he never curses uh, anyone for 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 not having children um, uh, the barrenness in the in the early parts of the scriptures have a lot to do with with uh, the passing on of the family name and uh, and and the inheritance and that sort of thing so when we see things that are spoken of in the scripture we really have to understand the background of what it's about so that when we try to uh, uh, apply it to 2018 we don't um, we don't take apples for apples for oranges all right so so contraceptive using a condom uh, uh, is not a sin uh, biblically uh, it, it's actually an extra biblical uh, a thing that we are that we have to use biblical principles to interpret and and the truth of the matter is that uh, if, if you don't want to w want to get pregnant uh, um, uh, the that reverend. is not that is not uh, that is not something that is against against scripture, uh, but the Bible does encourage you to to enjoy the enjoy children responsibly. Uh, uh, it, Reverend, it, we, have, fact, we have we have a fact, question think, on that. Go ahead. Uh, it's an extension of what you're saying. Someone went further now to say, if I do with a condom, then will I call it sex because I can claim that I'm not in here because i am covered for instance if it is raining and i have an umbrella or a raincoat rain is not gonna get in my body i'm not gonna get rain on me but it's going to come on the court and it's gonna go into the ground so if somebody can say condom is okay then somebody uses it to somebody and then claim i didn't do adultery I didn't do any fornication because I did not get in there. I was covered. What's your take on that, that? Prophet? That's absolutely absurd. That that the 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 adultery that the scripture speaks about is spiritual before it's physical. Mm. In fact, did Jesus speaks about adultery of the heart long before he speaks about physical adultery. So before it's you not, even touch a woman, act, you can it's commit not just adultery the act of, of going of intercourse. And, and and the fact that you have something covering you does not does not mean that you have not not done the act the the, the adultery and sex becomes a spiritual marriage it's a spiritual thing long before uh, 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 we can talk about anything physical it's spiritual so if you're wearing a condom you're still spiritually um, 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 having a soul tie as it were if you want to use that term uh, with that person the the the, the that that argument is is an argument that is coming from somebody who does not want to take responsibility <laughs> now for their now actions. now reverend i'm gonna kill you you're gonna kill me back now if you say that then who can we say masturbation is a sin if you're married and you are having the thoughts of a lady who is your wife in your mind while he's practicing masturbation masturbation in marriage or or or, or, or you are married and you are having yeah. masturbation but the one in your thoughts is your wife because the That's sin fine. is if you look at a woman lustfully you have committed adultery in your heart what if Absolutely. i look at my wife mm, and then masturbate what's your take Mas on that masturbation one? masturbation uh, uh, within the confines of marriage is not a sin Remember that marriage sanctifies a whole lot of things, and that's why I'm about to get into uh, uh, oral sex in a second. But masturbation, uh, 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 marriage rather, sanctifies a whole lot of things that would be sinful outside of marriage. Uh, uh, mutual masturbation between partners or masturbation, suppose a, a spouse is traveling and, and, and their wife they get on FaceTime and 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 they're 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 doing <laughs> some things with each other. Uh, that, that that is uh, that is actually that's holy. I didn't that's see that coming, Reverend. Sanctified. I didn't marriage. see that one coming. Can you repeat again? <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if if for instance, I am a I am a preacher that travels all over the world to preach. Yeah. I, I don't I, I don't see my wife all. The, if my wife calls me, FaceTimes me, in, in, and and is wearing something something very sexual uh, on the FaceTime mm. uh, uh, if I just but me and her decide to indulge in, in in a mutual masturbation 
that that's perfectly normal and perfectly uh, perfectly fine because it's within the confines so of the So there is no sin in doing that. There was no sin. All right. There was no sin. But is it possible for somebody to close his eyes or her eyes and only think of practicing it with her husband only or her, uh, her husband only or or, or uh, his wife only? The, and mind, the mind can do whatever you, you want it to do if you discipline your mind. Now, if your mind is wandering on other people other than your spouse, then, then you're, you're going into the territory of adultery of the heart. Mm. Um, uh, um, you, you're, you're looking upon a woman to lust, whether that, that woman is physical in front of you or whether you have imagined that woman in your head. You're still uh, uh, fantasizing in things that are that that are that do, does not belong to you. Let every man have his own wife. All right. He says, "It marry lest you burn." Mm. And 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 if you are burning, let every man have his own wife. Which means one one of the purposes is not the only purpose. So women don't kill me. You, you don't get married just for sex. But one of the purposes of marriage is to fulfill the sexual need that is shared between both men and women. And that God has provided for that through marriage. So like what what would be an wife. advice to somebody watching me right now? And he did wrong to his wife maybe last year. And for eight months, the wife is not willing to have sex with him. And you know, men are always burning January to December. What will be your advice? <laughs> um, they, they need to go to counseling. Uh, there is a reason. That, well, she, she has to forgive, of course. And, and, and also maybe, maybe uh, some retribution or some amends need to be made. Uh, for the for the husband that has wronged the wife in order for forgiveness to take place mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be extended eight months is a very long time But that kind of situation causes problems and, and I'll tell you what Paul said and Paul says it in Corinthians uh, 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 After after I think Corinthians around uh, chapter 7 and uh, chapter 8 but between those chapters he's beginning to talk about the fact that the woman has no power over her own body and the yes. man has no power over his own body that 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 when you get married you become one your body belongs to your husband your your your, your body belongs to your wife now reverend sorry yes. to, to 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 cut you short as you are talking about that that the wife has no power in your own body can a man go and do whatever he wants from his head to toe with that body <laughs> since he owns <laughs> that body i think that some communication that needs to be Oh yes, she, she is willing and you are willing. So can you go down everywhere and do whatever you feel as long All as right, she's in agreement? we're getting into the oral sex now. Now oral I sex. think that we need to go into the territory of of a, a man named Solomon. And if you if if you have never read this book in your Bible, go and read the book of Songs of Solomon, where yeah. Solomon allegorizes his relationship with God with a relationship with a lover. And you know Solomon was into many many exotic things he had over a thousand wives yeah <laughs> and he tried many things uh, uh but he often speaks about uh, the woman going down into the garden of nuts uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and he talks about uh uh, uh sh she stood under my shadow and tasted of my milk uh he said my my, my lips touched her flowers he, he, these are some quotes from the books of Songs of, songs of Solomon. Which <laughs> can, you, can you repeat that, that those verses? <laughs> <laughs> when, 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 when Solomon says that she, she knelt under my shadow. And she knelt down milk. under his shadow. Yes, and, and tasted of my milk. And, and tasted and, his milk. Yes, and, and she went down into the garden of nuts and my, my, my uh, uh, he, he said my lips touched her nipples and touched her flowers uh, there, there, there were there are many scriptures that have allusions to these sexual behaviors and even before we get to songs of solomon but what i'm showing you is that the bible is replete with 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 uh with some of the activities sexually that that men and women had and jesus jesus uh, uh never condemned it neither did, did, did in the Old Testament did God condemn it as long as it was within the confines of marriage again marriage sanctifies a whole lot of things now there are some things such as anal sex that to me I would draw the line there 
because that's not something that I would enjoy. <laughs> but I, I know others that might enjoy it. Now, if you ask me, was the body made for that? I, I, I think that, that that was made to be an exit, not an entrance. <laughs> but but if you do if you do make it make it an entrance have you sinned have you sinned uh, the, the, i don't think you have sinned if you are within the confines of marriage because the bible says the bed is undefiled for a reason which means that everything that would normally defile no longer defiles as, as long as it's mutual between the two people the husband and the wife. i wouldn't I, I wouldn't suggest that you do it but uh, many people uh, with their with your, their doctor's approval go and do things you know if you want to 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 give your your husband fellatio or your wife cunnilingus in which you you're going to go down orally on the both of you well 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 so did so did solomon so did a lot of people uh and and it was it, and it was not sin it was not sin in 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 either case so uh the main thing is your conscience needs to be free and if your conscience is bothering you because it's a cultural wrong then that should be dealt with culturally but if you're asking does the bible prohibit it the bible does not prohibit it now well let's talk about culture as i'm gonna make another call to another person uh in my church where i grew up before i came to the best church kingdom embassy I was in a church years ago around 2001 which said a man is the head of the house and he is the one in charge is the main authority of the house so once you are practicing sex men should be on top a woman is not allowed to be on top and they say a woman must not come it becomes a sin only man should come the bible says she should fulfill his desires not her desires and that's what they caught and that's the culture in that church not in the bible but in the church now if anybody who is in that position where they are in that culture uh but one believes the other way what shall we do to those people uh, again that's a situation of counseling that's how they were raised and if both of them are christians then both of them need to submit their culture to the word of god right uh, the, what you are describing is a very chauvinistic male dominated type of culture yeah. that still exists in the Middle East and in many in many countries where it's male chauvinism and male domineering and the yeah. female has no voice if you come over here to America to the western side of the world we know hey. it's vastly different women over here uh, uh, not only have their independence they have their voice they, they voice their needs all right do I believe that 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 scripture allows women to do this i believe that jesus even though he lived in that culture of male dominate of a male dominated society there are scriptures that lean towards a husband loving a wife and doing everything in his power up to dying for her mm. uh, in order in order to please her all right so so there is an idea mm. of a man going far to please his woman and there is an idea of a woman lifting her husband up and honoring him now mm. th th that has nothing to do with what position you want to you want to have in the bedroom whether you want to do missionary doggy style <laughs> whether you want to do it up against the wall that does not change who is the head of the house yes right uh uh, uh now now if, if the woman's body was designed to have multiple orgasms now men can only have one orgasm at a time this yeah. is the creator who has made us this way Mm -hmm. We are designed to only have one. She is designed to have multiple orgasms. I mm -hmm. think it would be very, uh, uh, very uh, wasteful for God to create a woman that can have multiple orgasms and then command her to have none. Mm, <laughs> we can sense. only have it once. She can have it multiple times, which is which is inferred that we're supposed to give it to her mm. many, many times. We can only, <laughs> We are supposed to. We are supposed to finish last this is why we only have one she can finish many times she can have more than one mm -hmm. which means that a man should should really be seeking to please his wife first one last me. question now reverend what's your take on toys toys in the bedroom yeah the, the only the only argument against toys in the bedroom are those that believe that they are idols and i just want to dismiss the fact that 
those things are idols. You're not using them for any kind of worship. You, you, you're not using them for any any type of, 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 of sacred action. Yes. Once we get that out of the way that they are just toys used in the bedroom, then again, the bed is undefiled. They are just they are just aids uh, in the bedroom. Now, you it's need like, to go it's to like your spouse cooking and, and adding them. spice in the pot. Spices yes. and, and... You need to go leaves. to your spouse and tell them what you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable being whipped and chained, okay, then you need to say that. If you're not comfortable being penetrated by anything else other than your your, your partner's sexual organ, you need to say that. You have a voice, and you you have a, a right to say that I'm I'm not comfortable with this. I'll go this far. I'll try that, and I won't do this. And both of you have to come together in agreement about that. But if you're asking, is it a sin? It's not a sin. Mm. Thank you so much. God bless you for everything. I'll be in touch no soon. No problem. If there are other things, we'll call you back soon. God bless you, sir. Thank you. This is the Bishop Reverend Odin James. And I'm going to call the Prophet Israel Matthew. And he's going to be talking about food. Are we allowed to eat food? And what is his take on it? What is his perception on what we're talking about? And we're going to hear uh, A, B, C, D and stuff like that. What? Are you there? Papa, how are you? Uh, don't Papa, Papa. I'm in India right now and surrounded by hot spices. <laughs> I was listening to what? The hot pot. Uh, the question that I have for you today is, Many people, they don't know, is it a sin, is it a good thing or bad thing for you to, to take your other, uh, let's say, fingers and get into the secret place, into the cave? Or are you, are you supposed to be eating? Are you supposed to be eating and are you supposed to be uh, getting in other parts and are you supposed to be doing oral sex and stuff like that? What is your take, especially on eating? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thou shalt not love. What, what, what's your take on it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a tough one. You've been but, married um, for over four years now. What, what, what I can say is... For six years you've been married, so what's your take? I don't, what I can say is, okay, before I go to your question, I have something that I want to read first. Mm -hmm. um, it's Psalms of Solomon. I'm not looking. Yes, Songs of Solomon. Solomon, two, three. Songs of Solomon, uh, chapter number two, verse number three. The Bible here says, as an apple tree among the trees of the forest, so is my beloved among the young men. With great delight I sat in his shadow, and, he, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's not me. That's not me. It's the uh, Bible. <laughs> uh -huh. So my take on that one is, uh, I can... I can be, we can enter in a restaurant and we can all order food. But as we order food, all of us, they bring cutleries to the table. But it's up to me to decide whether to use the cutlery or to use my hands. Mm. So I don't think if I use my hands to eat the, the food that I ordered, it's a problem because that's how I feel like to eat my food. Mm. So I don't think using my mouth or using my tongue i don't think it's a problem because uh when it comes to sex nobody has a formula on how it should be done neither the bible has a formula on how it's supposed to be done the bible if you read genesis the bible just say and just spoke and say and adam knew his wife but he never tell us how he knew his wife but the question now son is can we claim that you have, um, uh, can we claim that you have, um, 
Uh, huh? <laughs> okay, talk. Oh, my questions are deep. You talk a little bit. <laughs> so I'm saying, uh, nobody has ever told us about how it's supposed to be done. But just that we are we are limited with our background or with our um, uh, 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 where we came from or our um, religion. So the problem is the people who started the gospel before us, they have got their own way of doing things. So that is the thing that they brought into the lives of people and people they think that's how it's supposed to be done. But I believe I do things according to how I see it fit with my partner is our agreement. Mm. So I think those guys who started before us, they killed us why? because they didn't know how to do it. So they wanted everyone to do according to the way they wanted them to do it. So eating, I think it's a great thing as long as me and my partner are in agreement. Mm. Because, okay, how many people are watching me or listening to me right now who just take uh, the chicken, boil it, and eat it like that? Why do they put spices? Mm. The reason why they put spices, they want it to taste nice. So the reason we do some other things is because we want to enjoy it better. Mm. So I don't see a problem with that because I'm spicing my my marriage, I'm spicing my bedroom, I'm spicing whatever I'm doing. So, let not anyone say, uh, because you, you, you put some spice in that you don't want. If you don't eat the Indian spices, don't buy the food of Indians. Mm. So don't go around and say the food for Indians is not good. Stop eating the Indian food. So, so my take, what, I'm saying, what I think is, uh, uh, eating is not a problem. And I don't see any problem with eating. So if what about what me, about uh, annual sex? Sex. Ah, uh, that one now. For me, I don't know about others, but me, I don't. That one is not. It's not. It's not good because the word that you want to use is used for for for. <laughs> <laughs> for other things <laughs> the word that you want to use is used for flashing the waste from the body so I don't see anyone enjoying from that part so that one I don't think it's it's, it's inappropriate, inappropriate but is it a sin is the question Uh, the Bible says, "Whatever you do, I think if if I'm if I'm if I'm right, it says whatever you do, if you do it with faith, it's not a sin, right? So which means those who do it, I don't know how they do it, but I don't think it's a problem to other people. So if it is not a problem to somebody." what will be your take now on men to men because the, what they are doing with men to woman is the same they are doing with men to men no a man does not have a hope the only hope a man has is a hope to, to, to offload the waste from the body yeah I'm so, saying if a man is okay with having sex with a woman and using that hope what if the man leaves that woman and goes to another man and do the same thing Your question is: Is it a is it a problem or what? I'm saying now: if, Is it a, is it a problem for a man to do that with his wife on the other part? If it is not a problem, will it then be a problem to do that with another man? I, I believe if it comes to sex, it has to be done the, appro the, 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 the appropriate way. All right. The right way. Yes. I believe when God created everybody, there's a way that we're supposed to do sex. I think that's male to female. And it's not anal, but it has to be the other way around. So I don't, I don't 
I don't think that we should use the anal for sex. It's not good, <laughs> in my own opinion. <laughs> now, the question, the last question I have for you is, all right, you know it's a wrong thing for you to get inside that hole. But what if your partner or you want to be leaked in that place? Would that be wrong for someone to leak you? I think on that one, is for me, it's going to be wrong. Because me and my partner, we sit down, we talk about it first before we do it. Yeah, I'm saying, you, you may say maybe, ah, nah, but maybe your partner wants it, enjoys that. What's your take on that? Male ah, and female. No. Male and female. Ah, for me, it's a no. Because <laughs> leaking, it's, it's, it's almost similar to eating, to doing it. So I don't think... <laughs> So I don't think it's it's a I, I don't think it's So correct. if the wife says penetrate inside my butt will you say no? Ah, that, that's a no for me. All right, may God bless you and may God be with you in Papa. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was teaching my sons and um, I, I was teaching my sons and as I was teaching my sons I came to a place where I began to teach them levels of having sex and I was saying there are six levels and six senses that you should operate with when it comes to enjoying sex in your bedroom because number one there's the sense of hearing there are words that we can say in public because those words are for the bedroom and there are clothes we can't wear in public because they are for the bedroom f words were never created by men to be said in the public though we are now having pastors that can talk about those words on poopy but the point is there is the sense of hearing you need to put nice music in the house in the bedroom nice music which is called sexual music you can't be playing hallelujah while least you're having your 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 barbecue party in the bedroom you must be able to know what music to play because it starts with the sense of hearing that is why sounds are important i was counseling a couple uh and the man was like my wife doesn't say anything she doesn't produce any sound she's just so quiet when we start enjoying it and i began to say it's wrong because it becomes uh, a problem because the sense of hearing is not satisfied so you have to understand that once you are practicing as a married people you need also to be able to fulfill the sense of hear of, of listening and also you need also to satisfy the sense of seeing that's why you need to wear nice clothes that goes with what you're about to do you can wear a bikini at a beach it's okay but once you put a bikini in church it's wrong because you are doing it at the wrong place at the wrong time so the clothes you have to wear in the bedroom and then it, it satisfies the sense of the eyes right then you get to now the sense of touch sense of touch somebody needs to feel i'm touching something that's why some of the ladies got to go to gym and work out their butt and do a b c d and why because sense of seeing somebody needs to look at a nice shape something nice somebody's nice shape is round somebody it's it's caving somebody it's flat it, it depends with your partner but it has to be satisfying the sense of sight and then the sense of touch somebody feels like if i touch this but mm -hmm, if i mm -hmm, something got to do happen and i don't want to go deeper but you can go on my uh website and 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 and, and, and get into the uncensored why did i get married uh video which i was teaching all these levels then there is a, a, a sense of of, of, of tests 
where you, you got to test your, your, your mouth, your lip, your, 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 your tongue. Something got to test you. You, you got to test. It, it, it goes everywhere until then you get to the sixth sense, which I'm not going to talk about. But we are going to be continuing with this subject, I believe. I'm going to be grading my own spiritual father to talk about this. What is his take? I'm going to be talking about Bishop Noah Jones. Uh, I'm going to be talking of great Bishop Noah Jones, Pastor Benny Heen, great bishops around the world, and talk about great men of God, great prophets, and put them on the speaker. And they're going to share their mind with everybody on the spiritual point of view and the physical point of view. As I go, I want somebody to hear this and hear me in the Holy Ghost. It's very important to understand that sex is spiritual before it is physical. Every time you are having sex, demons are invited by sex. And angels are invited by sex. Whether it's Oriel, it's whatever name you can call, as long as it's sex, demons and angels are there. And if they fight and whoever wins, if you are having sex, your seed carries a spirit from whichever side wins. That is why adultery or fornication is not allowed because demons, they will use a legal ground to claim a seed and put a wrong spirit. That is why other children are born. I don't want to go there. But you have to understand something important. Sex is spiritual and it is physical. That's why you have to satisfy each other in the bedroom. That is why some girls that are not yet married, they think they have spiritual husbands. Why? The Bible says once a man and his wife are about to have sex, they should satisfy each other so that they don't give room to the devil. If you are horny and you don't have somebody to satisfy you, then spirits can have entrance to come to your dream and play around with your mind to an extent that you think you have a spiritual husband when you don't have a spiritual husband. Your body is in need and once those needs are not satisfied, Somewhere, somehow, they are going to be satisfied. That's why as a child, when you're growing up and teenager, you started experiencing what you called wet dreams because you couldn't do anything until your body began to react in the dreams. And in that dream, it's not like you were seeing yourself worshiping God and you woke up your wet. Now, something had to happen there. Why? Because feelings, hormones, I don't want to go there. But I want to thank God for everybody watching me today. And I'm so excited about this teaching. I believe we have spoke to some people. I'll be sharing my own ideas in the next broadcast we're going to have on this uh, subject. I'm going to be sharing with my sons and daughters. So if you have any questions, I want you to uh, ask our office, text our office uh, number or email us on our email. And uh download my book i have a book called uh, uh how to overcome uh uh no 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 there's a book i wrote about sex you know me i keep oh i i have over 60 books that i wrote so sometimes i'm like forgetting and stuff like that but you can get my book i have a book that i wrote about sex and it's 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 a powerful book and i don't want you to to, to miss it for any reason go and and download it there's also a free book on my website called how to overcome uh, water spirit so if you're struggling you, i also have a book called why did i get married you can go there and download that book and i know your life will never be the same again i'm trying to look for the book so i can tell you the right book to go and uh, download i have too many books so i keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling but um also as i'm scrolling if you are here in america i have a prophetic school in person that i'm doing on the 30th and the 31st and the 1st of january 30 december 31 december 1 january i'm having uh, a prophetic school in person fly in here many people have already registered many people you have uh or they have already uh, been there and everybody have tried everything to to be here so make sure you don't miss it for any reason make sure you are here make sure you are going to be here and we're gonna be blessing you uh, overcoming the forces of sex is the book overcoming the forces of sex 
overcoming the forces of sex some people are not yet married and they don't know how to overcome the force that comes with sex god bless those that are god bless you uh nathaniel gardner for your offering my may bless god bless everybody who've been giving but download the book called overcoming the forces of sex there's also another book i'll encourage you it's called the 31 prayers of my uh 31 prayers for my husband and my wife or oh, that was for my wife and i wrote 31 uh prayers for my wife and i wrote that one so it's a book that guides you to pray for your husband each every every day from the first of the month to the last day of the month but i pray for you everybody may the blessing of the lord be upon you may the grace of the prophetic rest upon you i pray that god will take you from one level to another level in jesus name send forth your emails and your phone number uh or your text messages to our office phone our email in our office and i know your life will never be the same again again this is the guy for the most trusted name in the prophetic signing out but it was really like it really touched me and I was really like wow like I didn't expect that. Control. 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 so amazing to see what God is doing in Paul's life I'm seeing letter K spinning in the heavens and I'm seeing a door opening for you In the video you can see I'm like pale face because I wasn't expecting it. It's like in the realms of the spirit I'm in Portland. I'm in a place called That's where Portland. I live. That's where I live. Portland. Prophesy. I am already in your house. Generational blessing coming to your I house. I receive. I receive. I'm taken here in my spiritual chariot. I came out. I saw myself crossing the bridge. I began to move all the way going all the way straight. There is this river on my right. It's written something like Colombia, Colombia River. There is a place on my left. I'm seeing something salmon, white salmon. I am at a conventional center. After Glenston, I stood at your house. I began to see letter E, letter L, letter I, letter J, letter A, letter Elijah, H. Elijah, that's my dad. That's your father. In the realms of the spirit, I saw a picture of him. I'm seeing this Elijah. I'm seeing glasses. I'm seeing beard, beard, That's beard. That's my dad, yeah, beard. He started saying Elijah, and I was like, oh, okay. And then Vitali, which is my uncle, 